Today has been one of those busy, busy, busy days. Randy's been out there cutting wire all day. I, I went and helped him for a few minutes, but I had so much to do up here at the cook shed that I needed to get it done. You know, we are loaded with squash and zucchini right now. It's every day I'm picking, picking, picking. I can't cook them fast enough, so I decided I would just go for it today. So I have made uh, um, sauerkraut, sour, zucchini kraut. That's what it's called, zucchini kraut. Just like sauerkraut, but just with zucchini. I made squash pickles, and now I'm going to make two loaves of zucchini bread. This is basically a dump and go. It is so easy. Very, very minimal ingredients. Won't take you 10 minutes to put it together and an hour in the oven. And it just, your house will smell wonderful and you'll be happy. Let's get started. Here we go. All pantry staples. You need some all purpose flour, some sugar, some baking powder, some salt, some cinnamon, some orange extract, some walnuts, eggs, butter, and zucchini. Okay, we're gonna start with the dry ingredients. We need three for, now I'm gonna make two zucchini bread. I'm gonna make two. So if you just wanna make one, you just divide everything I say by two and you'll be perfect. I'm gonna need three cups of all-purpose flour. Walnut. Two. And three. I'm gonna need one and a half cups of sugar. I'm gonna need four and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Four and a half teaspoons, one teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of cinnamon. What? Okay, that might be a little too much. That looks like a teaspoon. And to give that a stir with a little whisk, just get that all incorporated, all of your dry ingredients all incorporated. You shouldn't have to, you know, whisk it more than a minute because we're just lightly combining. Now that that's done, we're gonna set that aside. We're gonna take this bowl and we're gonna put all our wet ingredients. We need three cups of shredded zucchini. And I still got zucchini left over, but I can freeze that. Zucchini really doesn't, you know, some, some books tell you to blanch it. Some books tell you you don't have to. I, I don't blanch it. I just get all the air out of the bag, shove it in the freezer and I'm done. All right, well, we got three cups of our zucchini. Okay, now I know I've said in other videos that I did not like to can or freeze squash, and that's true. I'm not gonna pressure can 
yellow squash. It turns to mushy, mushy, mush. I make squash pickles in a water bath canner, and that's fine. Same with zucchini. It, it, it's too mushy. I just don't like it, and I'm not going to do it. But I can freeze the zucchini already shredded, and then I have zucchini bread anytime I want it. So I do do that. I will freeze shredded zucchini specifically to make zucchini bread, but not eat any other way. Okay, now we need four slightly beaten eggs, two thirds of a cup of butter, One teaspoon orange extract. Now we're going to give that a really good stir. Oh, oh, oh. And my cup of walnut. Sorry, I need a cup of walnuts. You can go ahead and put that in there too. You could wait till later, but there's no point. So. There we go, there's our cup of walnuts. Now that we have that all mixed together and fully incorporated, we're gonna bring our dry ingredients back over here and drop our wet right on top. And the wet ingredients go to the dry. <laughs> and we're just going to start mixing. And you only want to mix this until the flour is all, you know, your flour mixture is all combined. Don't keep mixing after you see that it's all wet. As long as it's wet, then you're done. But you'll keep stirring until it's all in there and there's none on the sides and it's all wet. Just keep going to the bottom, bringing flour to the top, drop it right in. And it's a pretty thick batter. I made a couple of loaves, what, Sunday? Saturday. I made two loaves on Saturday and we ate one and I took one to Randy's parents because we went down there on Sunday and he called me back Sunday evening after they had it after dinner. And he was like, oh, I love that. I love it, love it. And I'm like, yay. <laughs> yeah, and so did the coon because I didn't get to, we only ate like, yeah, I'm gonna tell you anyway. Okay, we ate about half. I left them sit out here to cool on a rack. And you know, this is an outdoor kitchen and the door is, there is no door. And a coon came in here and ate half my cake out of the, you know, or at my bread. He ate half of a zucchini bread before I come out here and caught him. But we ate the other half anyway, cause I ain't wasting it. Anyway, this will be the first time we get one that's not been coon sized or whatever. All right, now that's what it should look like. Nice and soupy, but you don't have any flour in the bottom. And that's when you stop mixing. Now, what I did with my pan, you don't have to, but I really like to put parchment paper in the bottom of my pan, even if I'm just baking bread or, or anything. I put that, I, I spray it, and then I put that parchment in, and then I spray it again, and then I don't have it falling apart when I try to take it out of the loaf pan. So, 
Now, all we're gonna do is put half in one pan and half in the other. And now if your pans are not even, then you need to go ahead and make them even. That way they bake at the same time. I mean, it's probably not absolutely necessary, but I always do. Okay, now I'm gonna, it's probably not necessary, but I like to do it. I will just jiggle it until it's level. And I'll take the other one and I'll jiggle it till it's level. Now that I have two level pans, we're gonna get them in the oven. Okay, now that my oven's preheated to 350 degrees, I'm just gonna set them in here side by side. And then depending on your loaf pan size, anywhere from an hour to an hour and 10 minutes. But check it, do the toothpick test right in the center at the one hour mark. If, it's, if it comes out and there's still a little something on it, then leave it that 10 minutes. Otherwise, you pull that toothpick and it's clean, it's done. Number two, there we are. Now all we have to do is let it sit there and cool for just a little bit, and then we'll be able to take it out of the pan. Okay, we are ready. It's been about 30 minutes, give or take a few minutes, and we are ready to take this out of the pan, which y'all using that parchment paper is so easy. Let's do what? All I have to do is flip it upside down, take it right out. Now it can finish cooling. We're gonna take this one, same thing, take it right out. Then we're gonna let it cool completely, wrap it in plastic wrap, and we're done. If you guys like this video, I'm sure you'll like that one. I have two more squash videos that are coming up, and like, subscribe, share, We'll see you then. Bye.